Spruce dip sugar is one of those mind-blowing recipes that you just wonder why people don't make it more often and you wonder why you've never had it before. It doesn't taste like you would think. It doesn't taste like an old spruce tree or a pine tree or anything like that. It has a very unique taste and it's really, really good on desserts. It's also super simple. We just went out, Sarah and I, and we harvested spruce tips from some clean spruce trees in our neighborhood. And we're just gonna grind it up with sugar and then dehydrate it. And we're gonna end up with a sugar powder that is just absolutely delicious. When you collect your spruce tips, you wanna collect them at the beginning of the year. Depending on where you live, that'll be at different times. Here, it's at the end of May. If it's a sunny area, the spruce tips are gonna come out faster than if it's in the woods. If you go in the woods, you can find spruce tips into June. Um, around here. So there's can be a whole four week difference between, you know, what environment and the ripeness of the of the spruce tips. So they're easy to spot. They're just the new shoots of the spruce tree. Um, this will work with any spruce tree, I, I suppose, like we've tried different kinds um, of spruces, um, but they all generally taste pretty good. Uh, you'd have to try and see if there's one that's your favorite. In our area of the world, sometimes there's a little critter called a spruce tip budworm that lives in the spruce tips. And you want to make sure that the spruce tips you're collecting don't have bugs in them. When you rinse these and soak them in water, if there's bugs, they'll crawl out and they'll float to the top dead. Uh, that's not super common everywhere, but in some places like northern New Brunswick and, and in Quebec, spruce tip budworm is a problem. The other thing you want to make sure is you're not in an area that they would be spraying. You don't need much. I've got two cups of spruce tips and I'm going to add them into my food processor. And then I'm going to use two cups of sugar and I'm going to add that in there too. Then I'm just going to grind this up. And I'm just going to let it go until I get basically a homogenous green sugar powder. And I have what I'm looking for. So I just have a green sugar and it smells quite vegetal. When it dries out, it'll not have that smell and it'll take on a different flavor altogether. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pour, the, pour this out onto a sill pat or a piece of parchment on a tray just going to evenly spread it out and then I'm just going to let this dry. This will turn a darker color. We'll see in a couple of days when we look at it again and it will lose a lot of its green and turn into sort of a more of a brown color. Now I could dehydrate this in my oven or in a dehydrator but I find what happens in those situations is a lot of the volatiles um, will come off and you'll smell it quite strongly in the room but we want to keep those uh, flavors in the sugar. So we're just going to let this dry in a warm, clean place um, for a few days until uh, it's a nice dry product. And we don't really have to worry because sugar is basically a preservative. Uh, this this will be safe. It shouldn't, shouldn't like grow any bacteria or anything like that. It's three days later and the sugar is quite dry. A little bit of brown in here, but mostly it's still green, which is really nice. Sometimes it'll turn mostly brown and that's totally fine. This is very crumbly. So now I'm going to put it back into my food processor, grind it up into a finer sugary powder and get rid of some of these bigger chunks. And then I'm just going to transfer it into a jar and I'm going to store it. So now I'm just going to try to get this in here without making a giant mess. So it smells fantastic. I don't want to grind it too fine. I don't want to turn it into powdered sugar. I want it to be the consistency of table sugar. Although if you did want it to be super fine, you could grind it as much as you want. And now I'm just going to transfer it into a mason jar. Spruce tip sugar in a mason jar. This will last for at least a year, a lot longer. It's uh, just sugar and it's all dried out. There's no real concern about any sort of bacteria or anything growing in there. You just put this on your shelf and sprinkle it on desserts and try it on 
a bunch of different stuff. It's a really interesting flavor. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing because I'll have more videos like this in the future.